We're back with Project Fears presented by Channel Q and A2 Productions. I'm Angelica Ross here with Ryan Mitchell, and we are having a very special guest joining us right now who is president and CEO of GLAAD, Sarah K. Ellis. I am so happy you took the time out of your very busy schedule to join us because I have some very, very specific questions to ask you because I know you in the thick of all the things. So I know, I know you've been fighting on behalf of like intersectional queer communities for the advancement. What is the most significant strides in the last five years you think that we've made? Well, hi, thank you so much for having me. And gosh, it's so good to see you. I mean, we used to see each other so often and now it's- I know. Uh, yeah, but um, so I think that we've made a lot of progress in the last five years, especially when it comes to trans representation. So we, if we think back, um, and, I, and I'm, I, I, I'm not great with dates, but I think it was 2017 that Caitlyn Jenner came out. Um, we'll have to fact check that one. Um, prior to that, about 8% of Americans said that they knew somebody or had ever seen somebody who was transgender. I think it was 22 million people watched that interview with Diane Sawyer that night. So right there, we actually saw in the field, in research, that number doubled to 16%. It went from literally overnight from 8% to 16%. And then what we were able to see from there is the prolification of trans representation in the media. Now, albeit at first, not so great and still a, a road to go on this, but we are at least having the conversation. We are moving it forward. Um, I think this year has absolutely been, this past year has been a breakthrough year for trans representation. So I would say in the past five years, that is something that I've seen grow exponentially. Um, and there are a lot of mistakes that have been made along the way, dangerous yeah. mistakes, but that's why we're here. Um, and I think that, um, so I also think if you're, if you're talking in general terms about what's gone on in the past five years, we've seen a lot of rollbacks. And with the trans visibility rising, what we've seen is specific targets put on the trans communities backs. I mean, there is this past administration went right for trans, the trans community. And it, it's interesting at the beginning when, when in 2016, after that election, a lot of the movement leaders, we sat around a table. It was two days after the election. And we said, how's this going to go? And we all agreed that the, that that they were gonna try and divide our community, that this current anti, that, that current anti-LGBTQ administration was going to try and pick apart our community and would go after the most vulnerable in our community. And we determined at that moment in time, we felt that would be their strategy and we would fight back. And I think we have. And I felt like, do you feel like they, I felt like they succeeded slightly in the sense that I couldn't believe how many white trans, and white cis folks, LGBTQ folks, who there was like a Trump supporter group? Like, how did that even happen? You know, yeah. in the sense of uh, folks not, like you say, understanding that this is gonna pick us apart because some of us who have some privileges, access to some privileges are gonna be okay with the status that right. uh, 45 was bringing in, but most of us are not. So when, when we think about that sort of disparity between what the most marginalized in our community experience versus what others experience. What can, what do you, what are your intentions, I would say with GLAAD to raise awareness about the violence that's happening with black trans women? Like I know, and I've been working with you guys for years closely, obviously I was there when they inducted you into your role. You know, <laughs> the Miller, there's history, there's history. At, oh yeah, that's at the Miller Coors place in Chicago, you know. <laughs> So I just remember when you you got your feet on the ground running and, you know, I've been working again close with so many people there when Teak Milan was there and Nick uh -huh. Adams there working closely with, um, you know, Hollywood to make sure that we're getting, you know, some this diverse representation or that they're doing things right when they're looking for trans roles. But what I still see is that um, even though we're having more representation in these you know, gender fluid roles and things like euphoria and what have you, there's still this gap when it comes to raising the awareness around what's happening with specifically with black trans women. 
So uh, what are there any initiatives now that GLAD is trying to inv uh, involve in to, to raise that awareness? Absolutely. So yes, one of them is, is through Hollywood, through storytelling, and we are doubling down on, the, on our trans media representation in Hollywood. What we've also done, which hasn't been announced yet, um, and I can't give names, but we've hired two people, um, two black trans women who will be overseeing trans representation in our news and rapid response team. So we're really wow. going at it from two perspectives, right? One is from the media, the, the representation in Hollywood, which we're making inroads on. And the other is going to be through news and rapid response. So, um, and that is where the misgendering happens. That is where the reporting happens. That's where the stories actually, the worst part of it is that the stories aren't being told. And that's what we want to change. We want to raise awareness in, and education in America about the trans community, especially about black trans women. Um, this community, as you know, is under attack, literally yeah. daily. Yeah. And um, day, yeah. yeah, and it's and and live in fear. And we have to change that. That's our obligation. Our job at GLAD is to change the culture, is to make it safe. No matter what the policies are, people first policies will follow. So that's what I always say. If we can change and educate people, we can move policies. You know, because and I'm also thinking about like, obviously, so much happened under the Trump administration because folks were not able to hold, not able or even willing to hold him accountable. You know, so when something happens that is against what we all want and stand for or looking for, um, no one's holding them accountable. So it's likewise in the sort of entertainment industry or when it comes to news reporting or media reporting, how does an organization like GLAG keep leaders in the industry accountable? We, I mean, we're a watchdog at the end of the day, right? <laughs> so when things go wrong, you might not see it publicly. There are things that we're working on right now um, that are very much behind the scenes. And, and we feel that we can, if we can educate writing teams, if we can educate the storytellers, the content creators, whether they're on TV or in, I mean, whether they're TV shows or journalists, um, we have a better shot of getting the right stories out there, fair and accurate reporting happening. And I will say, you know, I mean, one of the things that we haven't even touched on here is Pose, right? I mean, you might yeah, be familiar yeah. with that yeah. show. Yeah, you know. <laughs> what a game changer, right? Now, an absolute game changer. I, you know, so much of a game changer that literally on a personal level, my mother-in-law, white, cis, I want to say 82 year old woman doesn't know if she's ever met someone trans their book club started reading a book. And then I told them about the trans community. I told them to watch pose. They devoured pose. Then I had them watch disclosure and then they had me in their chat in their book club. Mm. Cause it's all virtual now. And it's like these 80 plus year old women for the first time yeah. learning about the trans experience. Um, wow. And so I think that the, the effect that media has is so powerful. It started with a book. It went to a show. It went to a movie that these women watched and learned um, about the trans community and became advocates and allies. So yeah. I think it's powerful. Yeah, and I also think in while you're while you were talking, I think about like when Elliot Page, you know, came out, right? And mm -hmm. how many people in the media still dead names, even though the resources are right there on your site. So what does that really tell you about the evolution? It, it seems like it's still it's getting there, but it's just not there yet. I would if I had to like I I love numbers, um, and if I had to say so, when Elliot came, when when Caitlin came out if we're gonna do like big media moments yeah. of, of trans people coming out. When Elliot came, uh, when, when Caitlin came out, and I'm making these numbers up, about 85 to 90% of people got it wrong, right? When Elliot came out, I would say about 70% of people reporting got it right. That's a big difference. 
we saw it. I literally could see the change in those two coming out stories. And what once more, people wanted to get it right. Mm, right. And they understood right. there was a way to get it right. So I am, you know, you're an active, we're all activists, right? And advocates here. You have to see, you have to look at the great and the good because that keeps you going every day to get up another day and fight. Um, and I think- It sure does because when I tell you the, the ignorant just gets on my last nerve, <laughs> my last nerve. But when I tell you, I, I, I know I, if they don't have you on speed dial on my sets, I do. Because yeah. when I'm telling you, when I was on, when I was on uh, uh, Claws, I remember over there with uh, in Marta Cunningham, me and her like both calling Glad, hey Glad, um, I don't think this, uh, this don't, listen, I need some help, you know? And Glad came in and let them know, hey, you can't put prosthetic boobs on a man and make a joke out of it and blah, blah, blah. Mm. Like all these things that were coming. And mind you, this is coming from someone who's a queer creator. The, the, the showrunner of that show is a gay white man, you know? So does, just because we're leading in those spaces doesn't mean that we know how to tell stories in, intersectionally. So I'm so glad that we have organizations like Glad. And I really, how long have you been, um, now, how long has it been? Has it been? Seven years. Seven wow. years. Seven years. Yes. I, well, you know, it's congrats. Are you getting the seven year itch? Are you not getting the seven year itch? I'm not getting the seven year itch. <laughs> no, I love what I do. I, I am a, a very fortunate person in that I get to do what is my passion and my love of media and, and LGBTQ advocacy. I feel, I mean, just so fortunate to find a purpose and, and get to do it every day and wake up for it. But I will say that I do think that you know, when we look at the representation, if we take Pose out of the mix of our re annual report, you would see there's 8% shows of LGBTQ shows that have characters in it that have trans characters in it. That's way too low. Yeah. When we have a population yeah. of 20%, only 20% of American people say that they know someone who's trans. So 80% of this country is learning about the trans community through their TV One or their channel, phone or their right? streaming content. We have to do much better, much, much better. And there's room and there's there's appetite for it for the first time. Absolutely. Well, you know, a girl's got a development deal. I'm, uh, I got a few things that are about to hit the networks very, very soon. So yeah. I'm gonna be definitely calling on GLAD for your support as we launch those into the network. You better, you better. I love yeah. your work. I love your work and I love what you do. And thank you for being out there. Thank you so much, Sarah. I love your work as well. I really appreciate you joining us for this conversation. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for all notifications from Radio.com. While you're at it, why don't you check out some of our other great videos?